By St Mary Le Beau Church, there is a statue of the famous explorer John Smith. It was given to us by the Jamestown Tourist Attraction in Virginia, and it was unveiled by the Queen Mother in 1960. Um, John Smith was an English captain and an explorer, particularly of the New World. He was a really important figure in Jamestown, which was the first successful English colony in North America, and he was the first Englishman to map a lot of that area. Uh, she's not called Virginia, is she? She's called Elizabeth. I, I'm well aware of that, but she is, I trust you will agree, a virgin. Uh, yeah, as far as I know. I mean, I'm sure she is, but do we really want to name a country after that fact? The most famous episode in John Smith's life is probably his encounter with Pocahontas. Um, in fact, Smith is the main contemporary source for much of Pocahontas' life. He wrote about her three times. 1608, 1616 and 1624. In 1608 he writes the snappily titled A True Relation of Such Occurrences and Accidents as Hath Happened in Virginia Since the First Planting of That Colony Which Is Now Resident in the South Part Thereof Till the Last Return from Thence. In A True Relation Smith tells us how one day he captured some Native Americans and the local paramount chief who he calls Powhatan sent some messengers to negotiate for their release, and part of that party was Powhatan's 10-year-old daughter, Pocahontas. Presumably Pocahontas was sent along because a party including a little girl would not be seen as such a threat. Smith says that, not only for feature, countenance and proportion much exceedeth any of the rest of Powhatan's people, but for wit and spirit the only non-pare of his country. Smith agrees to release the prisoners, and he gives Pocahontas gifts so that she'd tell her father how kindly the English had treated her. In 1616, he's writing a letter to the Queen of England, asking her to meet Pocahontas, and now his story is very different. In this version, Pocahontas is 12 or 13, and Smith is the one who's been captured, and he's about to be executed when she hazarded the beating out of her own brains to save mine and she persuaded her father to let Smith return to Jamestown. This is where the story of Pocahontas saving John Smith comes from. He writes about this incident one more time. In 1624, he writes a new book called The General History of Virginia, New England and the Summer Isles. This is by far the most detailed account of what happened here. Smith writes about himself in the third person, saying that after he was taken prisoner, Two great stones were brought before Powhatan, then as many as could laid hands on him, dragged him to them, and thereon laid his head, and being ready with their clubs to beat out his brains, Pocahontas, the king's dearest daughter, when no entreaty could prevail, got his head in her arms, and laid her own upon him to save him from death. Now, for a long time, historians believed that what Smith said happened really happened, but even when it was published, some of Smith's friends were saying, I don't recognise what's happening in this account. Smith's just telling this story to make himself look good. As some people think the execution did happen, as Smith described, but that Smith misunderstood it. Uh, maybe it was meant to be a ceremony to welcome him into the tribe. Maybe Pocahontas' involvement was scripted somehow. Well, why not ask a Native American what they think happened? Uh, there is no contemporary writing from a Native American, but a lot of tribes pass down oral histories which are beginning to be incorporated into mainstream thought. For example, Mataponi historian Linwood Little Bear Custolo points out uh, little girls like Pocahontas wouldn't have been allowed near an important ritual, just like you wouldn't bring your kid to diplomatic treaty negotiations. Pocahontas did often visit Jamestown with provisions sent from her father, so she and Smith would have known each other, but chances are the execution story is made up. Stories about Christians keeping their faith while being held captive by non-Christians were really popular at that time, so maybe Smith was just writing a hero story about himself. So how did these two end up? Well, 1609, Smith was asleep when his gunpowder flask ignited by accident and burned much of his stomach and his thighs. He went back to England to recuperate, but he was never really the same man again. He did come back to America, but never to Virginia. He went to a place he called New England and mapped out much of that country. Pocahontas was captured by the English in 1613. While there, she learned about the Bible, and she was baptised with a new Christian name, Rebecca. 
English sources often frame this as being something she wanted to do, but given that she was being held captive by a hostile power, it seems pretty clear that it was a survival strategy. She marries one of the colonists, a man called John Rolfe, when she was about 16 or 17, and he was 29. Um, John Rolfe did ask permission to marry her from the governor of Virginia, but Pocahontas didn't seem to have had much say in the matter, and nor did her father. She has a son by him, uh, a boy called Thomas, and in 1616, Thomas and Pocahontas and John Rolfe all go back to England to drum up support and investment for the Virginia colony. Twelve Native Americans go along with Pocahontas as her court. She was being billed as an American princess. In London they're really popular, they cause a sensation wherever they go. Um, Pocahontas's court sings and dances and they have an interpreter which means they can tell the English about their land and their customs and their gods. They're presented to the English king and queen and then just as they're about to return to Virginia Pocahontas dies suddenly. Now, we don't know what she died of. It's certain she would have been exposed to a lot of new diseases in London, uh, but some people think she might have been deliberately poisoned. Pocahontas is buried at Gravesend, and John Smith is buried at St Sepulchre without Newgate. You can visit both of their graves still to this day. Uh, today, Pocahontas has become a symbol of her people, not just of her particular tribe, but of Native Americans generally. She was the first American Indian to be featured on a US postage stamp. She has towns and ships and schools named after her, even a train. John Smith doesn't have very much named after him. When we read about history, or especially when we study it in school, it's often presented to us as this list of hard facts. But when we read different sources from what happened in Virginia, it becomes clear to us that there's a huge amount of history that we don't know, and we might never know. These aren't hard facts, these are mysteries. The prevalence of John Smith's story over the Native American one for so long reminds us of the power of the written word over oral histories. History might be written by the victors, but that just makes it more important that we seek out marginalised voices in the historical record when they do appear. You never know what perspective they'll give you.